There's a tremendous promise to quantum technologies, um, and that leads to that leads to a lot of hype currently in the media. And the fact that there's hype reflects the fact that there is tremendous promise. But what gets lost in that is that making hardware and doing engineering is hard, and it takes time. My name is Will Oliver. I'm a professor of electrical engineering and computer science and a professor of physics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I'm also the director for MIT's Center for Quantum Engineering and an associate director for the Research Laboratory of Electronics. I started my career in this field about 20 years ago at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory. Indeed, I am a member of the National Quantum Initiative Advisory Committee, and it's a presidential advisory board. And our role there is to look at how the U.S. is doing in quantum information science and technology, uh, in particular for the National Quantum Initiative, reviewing what's went well, uh, what we can do better, and then uh, making recommendations uh, to, to the president and also to members of Congress on ways that we can go forward as we think about the next quantum initiative program. We know that quantum technologies, whether we're talking about sensing, communication, or quantum computing, hold a tremendous promise, um, not only for our information security, but also for our future economic security. And I would say both of these are wrapped together in what we would generally call um, our national security. We want to make sure that the U.S. is a leader in the future and can take advantage of this, and also make sure that we're good stewards of this technology. And that means that we need to be deliberate and thoughtful in the way that we fund quantum technology and the way that we commercialize it. And so for these reasons and more, uh, it's important. What motivated me in my first job is I wanted to continue doing quantum, but I realized I'd like it to have some practical application as well. And quantum computing was nascent at the time, but I had a feeling that if, if we want to do something real at scale, then we need to go to a place that has a fabrication facility that would enable that, even though we were still at the single qubit level. And so that motivated me to go to MIT's Lincoln Laboratory. And I just thought to myself, you know, I'm gonna go do this. I'll collaborate with Terry Orlando. He was a professor at MIT. And, you know, if, if, it, if it works, we've got the fab facility here. And I really wanna focus on fab and materials just to see what we can do. You know, about five or 10 years ago, I think we all looked up and realized, wow, uh, you know, this isn't just a laboratory curiosity. It, it could be a technical reality. And so we've taken the next steps as a community. And of course, you know, with IBM, Google, Amazon, uh, and others trying to commercialize it, as well as many in the startup space, um, there's a large commercial presence there now. But there's still a lot of work to do. In the future, we know that we need to tie quantum computers with large-scale conventional computers. They do need to work in tandem. And we have those resources here uh, in the Massachusetts area. Between MIT, Harvard, BBN, and MIT's Lincoln Laboratory, we have a dark fiber that runs. And this is basically a test bed for um, quantum communication or quantum networking protocols. So there's a tremendous promise to quantum technologies. And that leads to, that leads to a lot of hype currently in the media. And the fact that there's hype reflects the fact that there is tremendous promise. I would recommend to folks to try to, you know, disengage from the hype, but at the same time, in doing that, don't miss that there is a promise to quantum computing. There is a promise. It will take time. Um, so I wish there was a little bit less hype and a little bit more reality.